This video is sponsored by Hostinger. Go to hostinger.com slash codemonkey and use the coupon codemonkey to get up to 91% off yearly web hosting plans. Succeed faster with Hostinger. In this video, we're going to make a radar sweep effect. We're going to have a bunch of enemies and items in our map and have a radar sweep through it and ping when it locates something. Then in the end, we're going to convert it into a UI minimap. Let's begin. Okay, so this is what we want to create. Over here we have a map with a whole bunch of enemies just randomly moving around, as well as some items scattered throughout the map. And if I press a button, there you go, the enemies are now all hidden as if they had some sort of cloaking tech, but they are still alive in the world and moving around. I can also disable the items and disable the background. So now everything looks black, but if I enable the radar, and there it is, now I can see the radar sweeping through the area and triggering a nice ping whenever it hits an enemy or an item. You can see the total radar range, and you can see a different ping color based on whether it hit an enemy or an item. So I can enable all the visuals, and there you go, as you can see there's an item in there, enemy in there, and as it goes past it, it correctly identifies which one it is. And with the keyboard, I can also make it sweep faster or slower. So just like that, make it really fast, and yep, there's a really nice radar effect. So this is what we want for our radar effect. And in the end, we're going to convert it into a nice UI element, like some sort of minimap. Now you can see that I have my player, I can move it around, and I can look at the minimap in order to identify what the radar is seeing. So there you go, in here above me I have an item, and if I enable the item visual, there you go, it is indeed in there, and I can use the radar to locate it, move up, and capture the item. And there are two more in here, and yep, there they are, and just like that. And I can also make the enemies invisible, and there you go, and they still show up on the radar. So this could be used to detect cloaked enemies, or maybe a special minimap that showed the location of hidden items or easter eggs. Once you follow the tutorial and build this awesome effect, you can make a WebGL build and publish it in your website which you can get through Hostinger. Hostinger provides best-in-class hosting services that are extremely fast and very affordable with excellent customer support to help you succeed. Choose from a variety of plans and pick the one that best suits your needs. Making a website from scratch can be hard, so use the very intuitive and easy to use website builder to get your page up and running quickly. I've gone ahead and built this very nice website using the website builder in just under 30 minutes. The best thing about it for me is how you have buttons to easily swap between desktop, tablet and mobile formats. Making your website work properly in all of those displays is usually a nightmare, but with the website builder it's extremely easy. So you can very quickly make a nice portfolio website that works great everywhere. Also, if you're making some really cool online integration for your game, then check out their super fast and affordable cloud hosting solutions. All the plans come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try out the services without any risk. Go to hostinger.com slash codemonkey and use the coupon codemonkey to get up to 91% off yearly web hosting plans. Click the link in the description and succeed faster. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it. So here we are in our starting scene, and if I hit play, you can see enemies just moving around randomly as well as some static items. And if I press a button, I can make the enemies invisible. They still exist, but they are hidden. And if I press another button, I can hide the items. Alright, so this is our starting point. Now over here in the editor, let's begin by making the visual for our radar. So we begin with an empty game object and call it radar. Now inside, let's make a 2D sprite, and this will be our sweep. We're going to drag the sweeps right in here, the radar line. Okay, here it is. Alright, so this is a sprite that will be rotating around. As you can see, the sprite in here on the import options, you can already see that the pivot is on the left side. So in here, everything is set up for me to simply move the Z value. Now let's also add another sprite for the background. Alright, here it is, our nice background sprite, and make sure that both of them have the same size. So this one has half of that one, okay, great. And now inside our sweep, let's add another sprite, and this will be for the trail, and drag this one, and just like that we have a nice trail behind it. Now let's place them all on a new sorting layer, so in here let's call the radar. Okay, now put them all on the radar. Now for the background, let's leave it on the background, so I'll leave it at zero. 
Then we want the trail, so let's put the trail at 10. And then we want the sweep on top, so let's put it at 20. So here is everything nicely set up. Let's test. And there you go, there's our very nice visual. We have a background, a line, and a trail. And then we're going to simply be rotating here on the Z, and there you go, that's how our radar moves. Right, awesome. So now that we have the visuals working, let's get to work on our script. Down here on this folder, make a new script, call this our radar, and drag it onto the game object. There it is, okay. Now in here, let's begin by grabbing a reference to our sweep transform so we can rotate it. All right, so here we have our transform. And for testing, let's simply start by making it rotate constantly. So we need to go into our update. And in here, in order to rotate it, we're going to take the sweep transform and modify the Euler angles. And we're going to modify it with a new vector three. We're going to increase it with a zero on the X, zero on the Y, and the Z is what we want to change. So in here, let's define a certain rotation speed. And here we increase the Z by rotation speed multiplied by time dot delta time. All right, so just like this, we should be able to see our radar rotating. And here it is, and it is indeed rotating, except it's going counterclockwise. As always, Unity, when you increase an angle, it goes counterclockwise, so we need to decrease it in order to go clockwise. So let's do that. Here, just swap the plus for a minus. And also, let's make it a bit slower. Okay. And yep, there's our radar now correctly rotating around. Okay, great. Now let's see how we can actually find objects while sweeping. Now here on the update function, first we rotate, okay. And then after rotating, we're going to do a physics 2D and do a raycast. So we start off at our origin, which is our transform position. And then we need a direction. So we need to convert our rotation in Euler angles into a vector two for the direction. So for that, I can use a nice function on the utilities. As always, you can download the utilities for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And here is a function that takes a float and returns a vector three with our direction. So if you want to implement it yourself, here it is. So we calculate the vector based on what we have on the Euler angles.z. And finally, we need a distance. So let's go up here, make a private float for the radar distance. And on awake, let's set it. Let's set it to how much we set in the editor. So here you can see that we set our sweep to have a width of 150. So that's our radar range. So in here put 150 and we use it in here. All right, so that's it. We have our nice raycast. Now the raycast function, as you can see, returns a raycast hit 2D. And this is a struct which contains the results from our raycast. So in here we can simply test if the raycast hit 2D dot collider is not null. If it is not null, that means we hit something. So when we hit something, let's spawn a pop-up. So here using a function from the utilities in order to easily spawn a text pop-up. And for the position, again, we can go into the raycast hit and use the point field. All right, just like that, okay. So as our radar rotates, it should be doing raycasts on every frame, and if it hits something, it should display a pop-up. Let's see. Okay, here we are, and yep, you can already see the various pop-ups. As the radar rotates around, you can see it's correctly hitting all of the enemies and all of the items. All right, awesome. However, as you can see, we have a slight issue here. Every single object is being hit multiple times. This is because every time we rotate our sweep, we're doing another raycast. So if the object is big enough, it will be hit in multiple rotations. So that means that we need to keep track of what objects we hit. Now, there are multiple ways we can solve this problem. In this case, we're going with the simplest and most obvious one. So here in our radar, let's go up here and make a list of colliders. Here we have our list and we are instantiating on awake, okay. And now in here, when we hit something, let's first test if the collider list, if it does not contain our collider, then we hit this one for the first time. We hit it and we add it to the list. Okay, so let's test and let's also make the rotation very slow. Okay, here it is and yep, just one ping and just one ping, just one, just one. 
and just one and just one okay so it looks good but and yep there you go when it goes past another second time it no longer pings anything now the issue is obviously because we are filling up the array but we are never clearing it so that means that we need to clear out our list at some point now one way to do it would be to clear everything on a full rotation however that could cause issues with moving objects so depending on how fast your objects are moving this solution might be better or worse in our case let's make sure we clear on a half rotation that should be enough for this case so over here before we rotate let's store the previous rotation position okay we have the previous one and then in here we have the current one so now let's calculate the rotations on a half rotation basis So here we are calculating both the previous and the current. We are getting the remainder out of 360 and then reducing it by 180. So now using this, we can make a simple if, if the previous rotation was negative and the current rotation is not negative, then here let's trigger our clear. All right, that should do it. Let's test. Okay, here we are and yep, one ping, one, 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 okay, so far so good. Another ping, another, another. Now let's see if this one pings again. And yep, there you go, he pinged again, that one pinged again. All right, awesome. So we have just one ping per object and it works perfectly fine after a full rotation. All right, great. Now instead of spawning this debug pop-up, let's actually spawn a nice effect. Over here in the project files, I have this nice prefab. It contains a simple sprite and a script to animate it fading. Here is the radar ping script. As you can see, it's extremely simple. We just have a disappear timer, and on update, we increase the timer, and then we reduce the alpha, and once the disappear timer is past the maximum, we simply destroy the game object. And down here, we also have a function to set the color and one to set the timer. All right, so very simple. Now here in the radar script, let's add a serialized field so we can drag our prefab. And now in the editor, let's drag our reference. Here's the script and just drag it, okay. And now down here, when we actually collide with an object, instead of doing our debug pop-up, let's actually just instantiate. So we instantiate our radar ping prefab on the position, which is the raycast hit point. And then we don't want any rotation, so simply quaternion.identity. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's test. And here we are, and yep, as you can see, the pings are correctly being spawned. All right, great. Now in here we have our nice set color function, so let's use that to make the pings look a bit better. So in here we instantiate the radar ping, and then we get the component of type radar ping. And then in here we can call set color. Now let's spawn a different color, one for the enemies and one for the items. So let's identify if we hit an enemy or an item. The way we can identify them is by what script they have. So over here I have the various health icons and the enemies and as you can see the enemies have this character waypoint handler script and the health items as you can see has an item handle so we can use those to identify what we hit so in here we do a raycasted collider so if game object dot get component of type item handler if it does contain that component then we hit an item and then on the other side we have if we hit the character waypoint handler, if so, then we hit an enemy. All right, so now based on which one we hit, we can go in here, set color, and pass in a new color. So for the items, let's pass in a green. So here the color, we have the red, green, and blue. So for the red, put zero, green, one, blue, zero. All right. And now here for the enemy, let's make them in red. All right, that should do it. Let's test. And yep, there it is. We have our pings with different colors depending on what they hit. So in here we have an item. There you go, green ping. And here we have our enemies and they have red pings. All right, awesome. Now in here we have one potential issue with our code. In here in my level, let's say that I want to spawn a wall. So a new to the object. Okay, so here it is, my wall just with a sprite and a box collider. So let's run the code. 
Okay, here it is. Let's see. And yep, there's our issue. Our raycast is hitting the wall as well as everything else. Now, obviously, we want the radar to only identify enemies and items and not to identify the wall. So let's solve that. Now, in here, the solution is actually extremely simple. Here, where we have our raycast, here it is. As you can see, we have our fields, the origin, direction, and distance. And then we have another field for our layer mask. A layer mask is how we identify which layers we want to hit. So let's go up here and make a field for our layer mask. And then down here, we simply use it. And now let's go into the editor. Here is our layer mask. And as you can see, Unity already provides a very nice drop down checkbox. And now in here, we can identify which layers we want to hit. So in our case, we want to hit enemies and also our items. All right, so here's our very nice layer mask. So let's test. Okay, here we are, and yep, there you go. It completely ignored the wall while still pinging on everything else. All right, awesome. If you want to learn more about layers, layer masks, and bit masks, check out this video where I go into detail into how they work. All right, now let's see one more issue we have. Over here, as you can see, we have two items placed right next to each other. And on the radar, when it rotates, as you can see, only the very first one triggers a ping. So the second one is not detected. Now, the issue here is with our radar code. Over here, we are using a simple raycast. So what this does is it fires a raycast, but it only goes until it hits something. As soon as it hits something, it stops. So that means if we have two things, one behind another one, as soon as it hits the first one, it completely stops, so it never checks the second one. So what we need is a continuous raycast to test all the objects that are hit in the entirety of our ray. So for that, instead of the raycast, we can use the raycast all. This one, as you can see, returns an array of raycast hit to D. So to convert our script, it's very simple. Instead of having just one, we have an array. And then all we need to do is cycle through the array. And inside we do exactly what we were doing previously. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now let's test. Okay, here we are, let's see these two. And yep, there you go, both of them trigger a ping. So now objects are no longer hidden if they are behind another object. All right, awesome. So at this point, we have pretty much our full radar working. If we hide our enemies, there you go. As you can see, the radar is correctly detecting everything and also hide the items. There you go, still showing. And hide the background. And there you go, we have a very nice radar effect. As you can see, it's rotating constantly and always doing a raycast in order to identify where each object is. All right, awesome. So with the radar working, let's do one cool thing, which is to change our sweep speed. So here on the radar, we already have our rotation speed. And now over here on update, let's do a very simple input. So we do a key down, let's do some button, okay. So if we hit T, let's increase the radar speed. And then next to it, let's test for an input on the R and let's decrease it. All right, there it is, let's see. Okay, so here we are with a normal rotation speed. It is currently set to 180, now I press T, and there you go, it's going slightly faster, press a bunch of times more, and there you go, it is now much, much faster. So there you go, now it's at 480, and yep, there you go, very, very fast. And now we can hide everything, and yep, just like that, as you can see, now we have our radar correctly showing where everything is. There you go, there's an enemy in there, and now he's moved in there, and there, and there. We can make it faster, 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 and there you go. All right, so this is our radar. Now, if you remember, we also have a function to set the disappear timer on the pings. And right now, if it's going too fast, as you can see, we can see multiple pings visible at the same time. So we can also make the pings be related to the radar speed. Let's do that. So we have the rotation speed, and then in here, we can go into the radar ping. And we call set disappear timer. So for example, we can make sure that it always disappears before it rotates over again. So full rotation is 360 degrees. And here we want the time in seconds. So here we can set the disappear timer to be 360 degrees divided by our rotation speed. So that way as it finishes a rotation, it will show again. Let's see. And here we are, and as you can see, each ping stays pretty much exactly the same amount of time until it finally goes back. So as we increase, you'll be able to see that it maintains the exact same thing. So at 
500 there you go now the pings are much much short-lived and yep there you go they're shown all right alternatively we can also make them pretty slow so we have multiple at the same time so in here let's see this and yep there's our radar effect working and now the pings are essentially living for two rotations so we can almost see a trail of where the enemy has been so you can see this one moving now he's stopping in there now he moved there 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 and yep there you go and all the items are completely static all right awesome so now that we have all this working, let's have some fun and make the radar as a minimap. So I'm going to do pretty much the same thing I did in the minimap video. So check the link in the description and go watch that video to see a step-by-step -step on how to create the minimap and render your scene onto it. Okay, so here is our nice effect. As you can see, I have a player here and I can move him around. And here in the UI, you can see the radar. So the radar is no longer visible in here. And now let's hide the items. So only the enemies are visible. And as you can see, I have an enemy right next to me. Yep, there it is. And now I got one right below me. And yep, there it is. And now there's an item in here and it's invisible. So I can't see it. So I can use the map and yep, there you go. And I've touched it and I've captured the item. Now there's another one in here and I can use the radar to find them and yep, caught that one and that one and there you go. All right, so here is our very nice radar effect being applied to a UI object. So again, if you wanna know how this works, you can check out the minimap video where I go through it in detail. But in here, you can simply see that I have on the UI here an object. It's very simple, it just has a mask. Behind it, it has a raw image and the raw image is using a render texture right here. And then in here, I have the main camera and using layers, the main camera is not rendering the radar layer, only everything else. So here in the preview, you can see that it doesn't show the radar objects. And then I have a second radar camera. And this one, as you can see, is only rendering the radar and it's rendering onto a target texture. And then I simply have the radar attached to the player. So as the player moves, the radar goes with them. So again, here it is, I'm moving my player and I can use the radar to locate the hidden items. And yep, there you go, I found the item and there are a bunch of enemies that show up in the radar as well. So over here, we have our very nice effect. As you can see, this is a great effect if you have some sort of cloaked enemies in your game or just some hidden Easter egg items. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonk.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more ENT tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.